Hello, everybody. Good evening. Rose Thorne here. Tonight, I am doing a react video of a few of Chantal's live streams today. And the reason why I'm doing a few at a time is because Chantal's been very, very busy today doing live stream after live stream, and some of them are quite short to the point where it's becoming a little confusing about where to start first. So I did a react earlier, putting two into one. And so I want to fit as much as I can into this react video to kind of recap anyone who's interested in knowing what Foodie's up to. And you're not having to watch a bunch of Chantal's live streams, which would take you hours to catch up on everything Foodie Beauty. So where are we right now? Well, Foodie started out the day feeling very sick. She got up today and she said she felt very sick. She was very nauseous. She said she had a headache. She went out, got herself some coffee, did an errand, and then she cut off the camera. When she got back home, between the time of her shutting off the camera and turning the camera on again, something happened. Something that made her feel better because when she came back on camera, she had a lot more energy. She wasn't suffering from a headache and no one saw her take anything for a headache like say aspirin, but she felt better and she had more energy. If you want my opinion, I think she did some kind of party favor to give herself some energy. And I don't think she was truly uh, really sick. I think she was just sick for a party favor or two. And she got a hold of something and that something gave her energy. What she got, I cannot say. I was not there to witness anything. But it was just amazing the difference between her first live stream where she said she didn't feel good and the second live stream where she felt remarkably better and she seemed much more alert. That just looks very suspicious to me. So a lot of things have happened today, including her making a community post going after Gary Unfiltered and Yaba, the YouTube underground calling them inbred, which I will go over here in this React video. I just want to stick to the timeline to keep things from getting confusing. So let's start with the latest thing. There's probably going to be a live stream or two that I haven't covered. I'm just trying to keep everything together to where we're following things as they happened. So let's start with the first live stream, the food hungry live stream that she did. Let's start there first. We're just going to cover a small portion of this. I was scanning through it because I, I can't react to every single minute of every single live stream that would literally take me until six o'clock in the morning. But I found some interesting tidbits that I would like to share with all of you. So Foodie went out and she got some more coffee. She's running about and she's at a park or somewhere and she goes driving. But let's start from here. Mm. Mm. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, I love bridgehead coffee. I haven't had one in a long time. Hi guys. Half baked <laughs> CBD root beer. No way. They have CBD root beer? CBD I could ingest because that's good for anxiety. Get edibles and bees. No, I have a turf. I have a huge uh I'm a bit confused, Foodie. You're concerned about your anxiety, but number one, you've left the house. You're driving. So if you're suffering from anxiety today, should you be driving? Should you be consuming anything with caffeine in it? Like, say, coffee or soda? I don't think that'd be a good idea. One grammar at home for tonight. That's what I'm going to do. I need a break from those ones. I can't. I can't deal. But that's fine. I'm totally okay with that. I've had a few days where, you know, it takes a few days. And I'm good to go. Get home, eat paneer, Mario Bees. 
you know, when she says she's taking a break from the edibles, what she really means is she doesn't have the money for the edibles she normally gets. Uh, Foodie doesn't take the low dose edibles. She likes the wheelchair edibles. And the reason why they're called wheelchair edibles is because they are meant for people with serious illness. They're not meant for recreational use. But she likes the wheelchair edibles because they are extremely strong. They're also not cheap. So perhaps Foodie doesn't have the money to buy a wheelchair edible. So when she says taking a break, I think what she actually means is that she doesn't have the money to afford one right now. But it's going to be very interesting to see if she buys one come payday. Maybe just relax tonight and just be. Maybe uh, one thing I can do productive for myself. I will work on listing things I need to start doing, like maybe a medical list for my doctor. That's what I do. You know what I'm doing? Look, I told you guys, you're like, how come you've been procrastinating? You know, because I overwhelm myself. I have to go huge amount of things. Right now, my life, let's call it Mount Everest. I need to climb Mount Everest. And I've always wanted to climb Mount Everest. So you know what? My life right now is going to be a figurative Mount Everest. And I'm not even at base camp. So I need to figure, you don't start, you don't start at the summit. You need to climb the mountain, right? And I know I'm talking so cheesy and metaphorical, but I like cheesy metaphors. They excite me. So anyway, I think what's best. I will agree with you, Foodie. You do have a Mount Everest of sorts to climb, but the problem is you know you do. You say you want to, but then you don't even get started. You talk about it. You think about it but you don't put action behind the words. You're always telling your VIBs and your viewers, oh, I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna get started climbing that mountain, but then you back off and you procrastinate. Since you like metaphors, let me throw one at you. What you're doing with your life is the equivalent of say, a person who has a home and they have an attic full of stuff. And they know that they should clean out that attic and get all this stuff out. So they sit downstairs and they say to themselves, I really need to clean that attic. But then they start thinking about all the work and all the time that goes into cleaning out that attic, going through things, throwing things away, how hot and sweaty they're going to be up in that attic. And just thinking about all that, they talk themselves out of doing it. And they say to themselves, oh, I'll just do it tomorrow. There's time. And then tomorrow becomes the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. And every day that comes, they start thinking about that attic, but thinking about it, it's as far as they get. And so that attic remains full of stuff and they never clear it out. And that's what you're doing with your life. You give yourself room to not do anything. You always say tomorrow, someday, later, next week. But when tomorrow comes, you put tomorrow off for the following day or the following week or the next month, and then nothing gets done. And that goes for everything in your life. And the more you procrastinate, the more you don't do something, the more things pile up until you get overwhelmed and you don't know what to do first. My solution to that is just start with something. Pick something small, get that accomplished, feel good about it, move on to something else. But you're such a lazy procrastinator that you don't even try. As I do that. So I used to, basically what I'm saying is I used to be a type of person who would have so many things to do that I would overwhelm myself and not do anything. Instead, because that's not going to change, I get overwhelmed. What I can do is... Instead of doing nothing, at least do one thing, right? So that's what I'm trying to do because even doing that one thing, even when you don't feel like doing something, if you just do it, you feel so better. You feel so good for having done it. You know what I mean? So 
I'm just gonna keep trying to push myself and just have faith that things will just get. I want to get a faith tattoo because faith is important for me right now. I, I feel, I feel like it's going to be going forward. You know, let's talk about getting tattoos. I have a few tattoos, and one thing I will say about tattoos is they are not something you should get in haste. Getting a tattoo on your body, no matter where it is, no matter how big or small it is. It should be something that's special to you and you think very hard and long about. You shouldn't do it on an impulse. It shouldn't be something just off the wall like a flash tattoo. It should be something unique to you. And it's something you should think about for a long time. Because once you put it on your skin, it's there for life. Even if you get it lasik off, there's always going to be a shadow of it left behind. So... While you're still in this impulsive mindset, you shouldn't be getting any tattoos or any piercings. Forward. I think that's a really um, typical thing for people in life, too. Like, you go through life godless, faithless, meaning, no meaning in your life, just mindlessly consuming and hoping things will get better someday for yourself while making no effort to actually make any fucking changes um and you get fed up you hit rock bottom and you you become spiritual because it has to happen you can't just keep you know ignoring the spiritual side of life and expecting to be fully a fully rounded fully healthy person physically mind and spiritually right so that's that's how I, that's just how I've been thinking. Well, you know what, Foodie, as far as spirituality, my point of view is spirituality is unique for each person. Being spiritual is important. And you're almost there, meaning you've almost got it. You've almost got it. See, watching you for so many years, I've known for quite a while that your problem, it's not about being of any particular faith or not any particular, not particular faith. It's the fact that you just, you're filled with emptiness and you can feel that. You can feel that emptiness inside of you. And you're trying to fill that emptiness with all the wrong things. It's like having a pain in your ankle and taking an aspirin. You know, the aspirin is not going to do very much. So you feel that emptiness inside of you and you're, you're just mindlessly consuming food and drugs and running to the men. None of those things are going to fill up that empty space inside of you. That hollowness you feel, that emptiness, that discontent that comes from not sitting back and reflecting and saying, who am I really? What do I want in life? What makes me happy? That emptiness comes from not working on yourself, not focusing on yourself. Running around being impulsive, buying things, getting that quick pleasure versus what you really need to do is work on yourself. You, you're, you're always escaping and running away from the work that you need to do inside. You embody the seven deadly sins, booty, and you seem to take pleasure in it. You seem to like that life because you won't let go of it. You like being the bad guy on YouTube. You revel in it. You really do. But you're halfway right. You know, like mindlessly consuming things is not going to make you happy. Spending all kinds of money not going to make you happy running after a crackhead not going to make you happy doing a million milligrams of edibles not going to make you happy consuming a million nasties not going to make you happy working on yourself though on the inside of yourself and the outside that will make you happy mm. oh. it doesn't taste fake like a fake vanilla Oh, it's such good coffee. Like the flavor is so good. It burst. 
I never used to be a Java junk. I never liked coffee for a little bit. Like, my whole life, I would have like a treat drink here and there, but now I love coffee. I just love coffee. Uh, at least one a day. One good coffee. I think I know why you're in love with coffee these days. Because caffeine, it wakes you up, it gives you energy, but there's also a side effect to caffeine. It curbs your hunger. Anybody that's ever drank coffee, you know, it drinking a cup of coffee or tea or something, it might stave off your hunger. And foodie has a problem with food. So that's why I think she gravitates towards anything that's a stimulant. Because it staves off your hunger. She's got a problem with food. And that problem with food is, it's a mental thing. It's, it's not a stomach thing. It's a mental thing. When you've got a problem with food and you're a binge eater, it's a mental thing. You've got issues wrapped up with food. Things that might trigger you. Things that might make you, trigger you to eat. You might be an emotional eater. That being lonely or depressed or angry and you eat to calm yourself down or to feel full. Or maybe you just look at food as a source of comfort. You, if, you, if you are someone that you're a binge eater, you might have emotional angers attached to food, a sense of nostalgia. Maybe food reminds you of a loved one or a happier time. There might be some memories attached to food. I mean, each person is different. And she's got a severe eating problem, but she will not address the root of the problem and deal with it. So to keep that monster in a cage for a while, she will drink lots of coffee to stop herself from eating. And she might be taking some party favors to also stop herself from eating. But where she's messing up is okay. So you might go a few hours or eight hours not eating. The moment she takes something that stimulates her hunger, like, say, edibles, that monster comes bursting out of the cage saying, hi, I'm here, let's party. And then she starts the binge eating. So if she's doing any kind of stimulant to keep the hunger away, the moment that she wants to come back down and she wants to sleep, that's when that monster come out of the cage and it will wreak havoc. <laughs> I don't drink it all day, like some people. Just going to get a Tim's. Everybody, when I worked at an office, going on a Timmy's, Ryan, you want anything? No, I don't drink coffee. <laughs> Just being friendly, I know. You want a cappuccino, you want a croissant, they have lots of things. There's one woman who used to work at the office, Michelle. She was really nice, really nice. And one of those like office people that is just like too into her job, like, that it was annoying when you're in a bad mood. You know, like, ugh, leave me alone. I have all these friggin' faxes to send. You have a better job position than saying you make more money, so go away. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, she was, uh, she, <laughs> she was really nice, but just like too nice and annoying. Imagine Foodie. Imagine Foodie. Somebody working at an office and liking what they do and being into it and that annoys you because you were there and obviously you did not like what you did sometimes like you know <laughs> i never thought i would say that she was too nice like no i don't i'm okay and then like on a call when she's like sure they have muffins they have donuts they've got some i'm good i'm good i'm good one time she got me something anyways it was like a freaking tea or something i don't think <laughs> Friggin' hell. Oh, I'm just kidding. She was nice. But she was like, she was like a brown noser, like with the boss and like, would be like, you know, she would like, she would not scold you or things, but like try to like overdo it with explaining why something should be the way it is. You know what I mean? Like, so I just wanted to know, what, can I talk to you for a sec? Like she would be like, can I talk to you for a sec? And I'd be like, so I just noticed that, uh, Last night, the storage room was, um... So, with, in Foodie's world, if you're mean to her, then you're a big B. But if you're too nice to her, she's still not going to be happy with you. 
So what kind of coworker would be perfect for you, Booty? You don't like women who are mean to you, but a coworker who's just a really nice person, you're not happy with them either. Let me guess, you want to work in a building, if you do work, with nothing but hot guys, right? That would be your perfect work environment, really hot guys that you can hit on all day and make passes at all day and they would do the work for you. Would that be your perfect work environment? The walk wasn't done right or something. I can't remember what she was complaining about. I can't about other shit. Always trying to hand over catalogs. Hey, are you interested in coming to a party? And it just got sickening. Like, I guess I have enough self-respect when I was in the work field that you're not going to uh, cut me short. Like, if I deserve a decent salary, you're going to fucking give me a decent salary or I'm going to leave. And that's what I did. My boss was like, I was on, starting to get on the up. I, I, I need to be a self-employed for the rest of my life. I don't care if I got to turn tricks. I will find a way. I would rather, I would rather be unhappy trying to find creative ways to make myself happy and make myself money versus resorting to a life of misery. I'll never, never work for somebody like that again. First, so I'm confused, Booty. Help me here. You're talking about ordinary jobs like they're full of misery. Not everybody is miserable at their jobs. And you're over here saying that you will never go back to the workforce again, that you'll resort to whatever you have to to live a life of freedom because you don't want to be miserable. Here's the irony in that. You're on YouTube and you make 10,000 plus a month and you're still miserable. Your life is no better being away from the workforce than when you were in the workforce. As a matter of fact, if you were in the workforce, you'd probably be a lot healthier. The fact that you have the, a job that allows you so much freedom your life is miserable. What do you do, ma'am? You run around all day getting nashies and edibles and complaining about Natter and running back and forth to Montreal, editing his videos, making his thumbnails. You are not a happy person. So if you can't be happy in the workforce and you're not happy making $10,000 a month on YouTube, what would make you happy? I mean, where where is that happy balance for you? Because I don't think you know what it is. First of all, this boss had the biggest broccoli haircut I've ever seen in my life. But I don't want to talk bad about her because, like, she was a nice lady. Nothing wrong with her. <laughs> she was a nice lady, but here you are cutting her down on a live stream. And that's what the most petty thing about you is, Booty. You know, we've heard many stories from your past talking about people from your past, things that happened many, many years ago, and you still bring up these old stories. You bring up these old stories and it's always hateful stories. There's never any happy stories. It's always bad stuff where you are trash talking these people that probably don't give you a second thought in their day. It, you know, it's just, it's just petty. It's very, very petty of you talking about people from your past this way that I'm sure they're living their lives right now. But here you are, ma'am. You make $10,000 a month on YouTube. And despite the fact that you make more than a lot of people, you're so petty that you resort to doing salty stories about people. And um, she was good to me. She gave me a lot of chances. Like I, I ended up leaving that place a few times because I wasn't happy. And like we were talking and she was like, Chantal, you don't know what you want. Like you do not know what you want. So like the, like the one time I wanted to come back, like I didn't even really want to come back. Kumbaya in the chat right now. <laughs> We're always telling each other to eat my gun. Oh God. Oh. Or is it Caitlin? Then? I don't remember. No, I think it's just it down. No, it's not. So here we are again, same live. And here she is eating the paneer again. We're back to the paneer. So earlier in the day, 
She did not feel well. She was nauseous, she said, had a headache. The next live after that, she was fine. And she's eating a paneer. And the night before, she said she sold the TV for money. And then the next morning, she got up, took a little mysterious trip out, and suddenly she's got money to get coffee and paneer. And she's just doing what she normally does. But we're back to the paneer. And she was eating a lot of food during this live stream. So before we go on, on to the next part, let's check out some of the comments. All Mind says, so I see she recovered nicely, quite chipper for being so sick earlier. Yeah, I find that interesting too, that she was very sick in the first live stream and she recovered quite quickly. Rogue Fire says, the cycle continues. Payday cycle is upon us. She's happy again, hopeful, eating paneer and talking positively about Natter again and talking so much about forgiveness. Here we go again. Oh boy. Well, anymore, I don't call it a cycle. I call it a circle because we are literally going in a circle and that circle is getting smaller and smaller and it's spinning faster and faster. And that's why people are angry. It's a broken record with one long scratch across the entire thing. It just keeps skipping. Uh, Miss Blackwood says, the manic tweaker monologue in the car, OMG. If anyone believes she's not on uppers, they are really gullible. She went from anxious, sick, nauseous, twitching, and aching to hyper, giddy, and social butterfly in an incredibly short amount of time. Yes, I thought that was... Pretty miraculous recovery. Sophie H says, you're making fun of Peach for being a picky eater, but ate paneer only a month straight, right? She gets fixated on one thing and then she'll eat it for a month. But in my honest opinion, I think her eating the same food over and over has a lot to do with the feeder fetish people in her chat. Somebody's paying her to eat that, my opinion. Summer Lady says, there's such a size difference between Sam and BBJ. So if Sam isn't around and you treat BBJ, you don't have to call him for a treat. It, it wouldn't be mean. It would be caring about his health. It already seems as though he eats his food and most of BBJ's. Or how would he get that big? You feed them at the same time. I know. I find that curious as well. Why is BBJ so small and Sam is such a big tubby boy? He's much bigger than she is. And I understand he's a male cat. Male cats can generally get much larger than the females. But the weight difference between the two would suggest that he's eating more food somewhere. Uh, let's see. Uh, Denny Trick says, so sick earlier. You had to do deep breathing for anxiety. Did a, the, a vid test to prove you fell ill, but left the stream, driving down the old long road, and a miracle occurred. Dope sick much? I may hate Nads, but most people are believing what he's saying about you being on the hard stuff. I don't know what Chantal's doing, but her behavior, it's, it's all over the place. And... I'm leaning in the direction of there are some serious party favors at work here. I mean, the up and down mood swings, the up and down in energy, being manic one minute and slow the next. Party favors, big time party favors. No Names here says, and no, everyone does not do scratch and sniff. We also don't pick our boogers and earwax, ew, and eat them. You tell yourself that because you know you are repulsive, but it's not true. <laughs> I can confirm as another person, no, I do not do scratch and sniff. I don't pick my boogers and I don't do my ear walks. I mean, Chantal's just got a preoccupation for uh, her flatulence and things that come out of her body. <laughs> Brooke A says, why are you telling Pete's not to get a job? Why can't he do YouTube for a side hobby that gives him extra income? Having a job would be good for him. I agree. It would be very good for Pete's. 
Pete needs to get a job. He cannot keep relying on Chantal. If something happens to her one day, he'd be in a world of hurt. It would be good for his mental health and also for his finances to get a job. Because if he got a job still living with Chantal, he could get to work on repairing his credit, which she ruined, put some money away. And if something does happen to her, then, you know, he would be all right. He cannot attach himself to Chantal for life. Anything could happen to her at any time. Chantal's stomach ball sack says, Chantal, I have to agree with some of the comments. You definitely are taking some kind of uppers. You can lie to us all you want. I don't think you're going broke just sending down her money. I, I, I believe that too. I think that her money is going in different directions, but it's not all Natter. I think that she is just doing too much of the party favors. And that's why way before payday that she runs out of money so quickly. Let's see. Uh, Veronica Ramirez says, getting close to payday, I see. See how the attitude changes every time? Well, payday is close, but it's still a week away. So I hope she's got enough of whatever she needs to last until payday. Racky says, you have forgotten all about the fact that aside from Natter's lies and abuse, you cannot stand his high-strung energy or be in his company more than two days. You were the one paying for everything you two did. You know, guys, I've said it before. I think that her and Natter going back and forth on camera is one thing, but I think it's a bit different off camera. I believe that there's just too many conflicting facts and things happening that don't make sense. But if you put it in that context of this is just an act for them, then it does make sense. You know, why things are conflicting, why things are not making sense. You know, like he doesn't like her, but yet he continues to see her. You know, she hates him, but yet she continues to talk to him. You know, there's got to be something to that. Let's see. Everybody's saying that she's dope sick. JC says, you're not broke at all. Broke people don't drive and get fast food, you liar. I agree with you, JC. If she were broke, she wouldn't have the money to do these things. I think she's playing at being broke because she's hoping that people will send her money. I think that might be a possibility. Saying that she's low on money and giving that the, the halfway appearance that she is. And at the same time, doing conflicting things like running around and getting food. And, and none of it makes sense. It, she lies, but then she doesn't know how to carry through to make the lie believable for any length of time. I'm broke, but after I tell you I'm broke, I'm going to go get fast food. Huh? What? <laughs> if you're going to lie, Chantal, learn to lie better. You know, and you get angry because we call you out on your lies, but you're the one who basically exposes you. Let's see. Everybody's saying, but I thought you were sick. I thought you were sick. So let's go on to this one, the bees one. This one's rather short. She's, I guess, raging about Natter. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm just creaming my body. Bruh. I know. Bruh. What the fuck? <laughs> like, God. My, I keep hitting my camera. Matter thrives off of making you upset. You know why, Kayla? Because narcissists do that. Maybe I just learned that, but... I'm just going to give my honest opinion. I think she saw or she talked to Natter today. And maybe he gave her some party favors or just gave her some attention because she's way too happy today. Way too happy. If if she and Natter weren't seeing each other, 
she'd be sulking in her bed, eating a million miles an hour. Whatever. He's gonna fucking try to destroy my life. I know it. He's never gonna leave me alone. Pardon me? He's never gonna leave you alone? You don't leave him alone. You pay for his phone. You go to see him. What do you mean, leave you alone? You live far away from him now. You could choose to stay away. You don't. You stay in contact with him. You send him money. You're choosing to be around him. You literally choose to do that. And her, she just sits there. Every single question that gets asked, he's like, she's like, what? Adam? So you're confessing right here that you watch their live streams. You watch Natter's live streams. You're confessing that right now. You're confessing that. And I want to show you guys something. Okay, this is Gary Unfiltered's Twitter. This is something that he posted on one of his, I guess, his community tab or something. And Gary was kind of making fun of Dee Dee. Wasn't even making fun of Chantal. He says, I'm lifting my fupa for you, Natty Daddy. Don't disappoint Dee Dee Doo Doo, or I'll have to get Foodie to come over instead. So he was making fun of Dee Dee. Look who posted a comment saying, What in the inbreeding hell is this? So there's Foodie trying to say that Gary, who is a Southern man, that he's inbred. She's throwing shade at people who are Southern. Foodie, I'm Southern. My grandmother was from Kentucky. My grandfather was from Tennessee. Yeah, I come from a Southern family. So you trying to tell everybody that all Southern people are inbred? I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm not inbred. I know Gary is not inbred. It's not a nice thing to say. Did it ever occur to you that you might have some Southern people in your chat? Yeah, you might have some people that live in those Southern states. You might want to rethink that. You, you're you're offending more than just one person, potentially. You're probably offending a lot of people. Not only that, but here's her community tab. Saying, okay, objectively, you literally both have more Funkle features than me. So she's making fun of Gary and Yaba. And both of them are Southern. So again, poking fun at Southern people. That's not nice, Chantal. Not nice. Like, you say you're done with Natter. Gary, he says, making fun of Natter. And yet, you're coming after him. So if you're done with Natter, why are you going after Gary? And why are you poking at Yaba? You know what I think, Foodie? My opinion I think you're so desperate for views that you're kind of doing the natter thing right now. You're just trying to pick a fight with anybody because you want the attention on your channel and to get more views. So you're just going to say whatever offensive thing you need to to get the views on your channel. But let's continue with this live. <sighs> Why do you have the brow bone of an 80-year-old fucking Neanderthal? I hate her. She's bold, I know. Well, he probably needs the view, so. Obviously, you do too. I can't call in. Did anyone ask him, like, he will leave you alone if you know him? No, no, he won't. It'll make him more mad. It'll make him more mad, and he'll just keep trying more things. It'll make him more mad. What do you care if he gets more mad? You're done with him, right? What do you care if he gets mad? What do you care if he gets mad? You were concerned about making him angry the other night. When you were saying things and provoking him on your live stream, you weren't concerned then. You know what I think, Foodie? I think you like to do things to get Natter's attention, negative things, trying to get a rise out of him or a reaction. You're looking for his attention in the wrong way. You're trying to use negative means to get his attention, to get him to contact you. You're acting like a child and 
you throw a temper tantrum thinking that's the best way to get somebody's attention. All the temper tantrums do is make someone not want to be around you or not want to talk to you. You're having the opposite effect. You would know that if you were an adult in your head, but you're a grown toddler. And so you're acting like a toddler. You're not handling things like a normal adult. Trying to use negative means to get something rather than approach them the right way. You don't know him. His ex literally fucking moved away. And and like in the middle of no fuck, fuck nowhere. Didn't even get a restraining order on him because she doesn't want him to have his address. You must have had, you must have cared. I care for everybody. No, you fucking asshole. Not everybody pays your fucking rent. Oh my God. Anyway. Yeah, you need to go. I hate him so much now. I really wish you understood. You know, whenever she brings up something she did for Natter, she thinks she's doing something. She thinks that by exposing the fact that she paid his rent, it makes him look bad. All that Natter did was take the money that Foodie offered him in exchange for her using him as content and spending time with him. She thinks she's doing something by exposing the fact that she paid his rent, thinking that's going to make him look really, really bad. When actually it makes her look worse because she's the one who gave him the money? Who looks the wor who looks worst, Booty? The person that you gave money to or the fact that you gave it to him? You think you're making him look bad, but trust me, you're not. You're making yourself look worse. I understand how much I fucking hate him right now. I just want to just fucking, I want him to like disappear from YouTube, I swear. Go away. What are they doing anyway? A QA about me and then they're gonna sue me? I have a right to defense myself. You have a right to defense yourself with lies. Yeah, good luck with that. Good luck. Didi, you're the biggest fuck you think I'm gonna ever talk to you again? I'm done with her. Bitch, I've been done with you a long time ago. And your ex fucking messaged me on Tinder, bitch. Yeah, and that's kind of creepy. Foodie did a post where she showed a picture on Tinder of Dee Dee's ex and thinking about contacting him. Were you doing that in revenge because Dee Dee is with Natter? So you thought, oh, turnabout's fair play? I'm sure that you would contact her ex, you know, trying to throw the middle finger. But again, this whole thing is performative, y'all. I, I don't think that they hate each other nearly as much as they claimed. No, I didn't think he was a great person. When did I say that, Dea? I said I didn't think he was a bad person, but fuck, I don't know now. So she said that in a live earlier. Oh, I think I don't think he's a bad person, but now you hate him. Girl, make up your mind. Is he a bad person or isn't he? Do you hate him or not? See, this is what's making everybody nuts. This constant back and forth. And it's not like you wait a few days before you change your mind. You go back and forth in the same day. Let me give you some information you may not have, Foodie. Your life is topsy-turvy. And you don't think normally, okay? You don't function like a normal adult would. Those of us that react to you, that watch you, we have a much more stable way of thinking and acting and conducting ourselves. We go insane trying to figure you out. 
and keep up with you because you're always flipping things around and the things you do do not make sense. And even though you're an adult woman, or you should be, you're almost 40 years old, you should have a sense of what's right and wrong. And you should be going in and with whatever your complaints are and airing your complaints privately. You're doing it in front of all of us, involving an audience of people that we're powerless to help you in whatever situation is going on. The only person that can help you is you. If you acted like a normal adult, you would keep certain things private and handle them privately. But for you, everything is content. Anything good, bad, ugly, in between, slimy, disgusting is content. Everything's content. And then you complain because people comment on what they see, even though you're the one that chooses to let us see it and hear it and be part of it. It's like you want us to be there, but yet, even if we're spectators, we're supposed to be silent. And that's not how YouTube works. God. I feel like I don't even, but do I even fucking know who he is at all? He's like a fucking, Jesus Christ. Shut up, willful ignorance, before I fucking block your ass. You're fucking annoying. I say, Jordy, you should sue them for loss of income and a damaged reputation because, yes, Chantel Pre Natter and Chantel Post Natter are two different folks. Exactly. There you go. Yes, I did, Daya. What's your point? Shut up. No, I'm not watching this. So let's recap again. She started out the day feeling sick and tired and nauseous. She did not feel well. She had a headache. And then she was happy and chirpy for a while and now we're at the head cheerleader bitchy chantal like she just shifted around different times in the same day do you understand why people are thinking you're taking the party favor chantal if you could watch yourself you would understand i don't care what he has to say actually i'm closing the window i don't give a fuck him and Didi have a nice life. I'll don't talk if you talk about me tomorrow. Receipts up the fucking arsehole are coming out. You're put them up now. If you got receipts on something, show them. Don't threaten them. Show them. And this live stream, this brief bees live stream, it was not for her audience. It was not for the reactors. It was for him. This is her talking to him through her monitor. This is her being all big and bad behind her monitor. She would never get on a phone and say these things because she feels safe behind her phone screen. And isn't that the irony? She uses her phone to, to stream all these live streams. She could use that same phone to talk to him, but rather than push a button and talk to him like a normal adult, she's gonna talk to him through her live stream in an effort to try to humiliate and embarrass him. Chantal, Natter does not feel embarrassed and he doesn't feel humiliated and you're not hurting him. All you're doing is giving attention to his channel. That's all you're doing. And maybe that's the purpose of this live stream. By talking about him, you keep him relevant and you keep eyes on his channel. You're an idiot. You're really stupid. Try me. You know you broke the law, like, and I have fucking proof of that, so you better shut up. And you know what, Chantal? If you file false charges, you broke the law, too. You've gone back and forth on your word, saying that he did all kinds of things to you, and then you said, I exaggerated the claims. If you claim that you've been through DVNSA and then you say that, Afterwards, I exaggerated the claims. I'm sorry, you have no credibility. And you're disgusting for doing that.
the most hardcore thing he used to do would be three meals at once and shit your pants on like <laughs> And then her, well, she does edibles. Bitch, go film behind your fucking sink. Go film behind your sink. Don't talk about my wheelchair when you drink three bottles of wine a night. I don't know why that would make her angry. Dee Dee mentioning the wheelchairs when she talks about them openly on her streams. I mean, she'll sit there and pop an edible in her mouth during a live stream. So why would that make her angry? You look stupid as fuck sitting there. I'm sure your job is going to love watching you sit there defending an idiot. Oh, you know what? I It just crossed my mind. I think the reason why she's, if she's really angry at all, the reason why she might be a little bit mad is because Dee Dee actually came on stream tonight showing her full self sitting beside Natter. That escaped my mind for a second, but I just remembered it. So that might be why she's angry. The fact that Natter was sitting beside Dee Dee, Dee Dee was showing herself, and yet Natter does not want to be on stream with Chantal. I have to let him stop triggering me, I know. He's just a fucking liar. So are you. He is. Then you're in good company, you're the same way. Because if I wanted to be back with him, I would be back with him right now. What do you think he's desperately trying to get my attention for right now? Money. Desperately. Money. <laughs> He's desperately trying to get your attention. I don't think he wants your attention. If he wanted anything, it's money. Maybe he's low on money. It's not about, I care about you, Chantal. Maybe he's low on money and he wants more. If he could get away with reaching into your purse, taking your debit card and walking away, I'm sure he'd do it. Because that's the only thing about you that he wants. That little piece of plastic in your wallet nothing about about you interests him but to get to that little piece of plastic he's got to go through all of you and got to deal with you that's the trade-off you want access to that debit card and what's going on in it well you got to deal with chantal he doesn't want you though he wants what you can give him but you can't get back with somebody that you were never with you guys were never in a real relationship. And as far as being with him, it's before payday. We know the cycle. He always pushes you away right until payday. Then he's all over you to get that money. And then once you run low on money, he wants nothing to do with you. The cycle's been going on for a year. We're all familiar with it. Hmm. Goodbye. You, Dee, Dee are a fucking idiot. And I hope you leave you dry. I can destroy you the right way. With the law. What'd she say? Hold on a minute. Because I can destroy you the right way. With the law. And how are you going to do that? Chantal, allegedly you went to the cops and filed charges. I've still got questions about that. I don't think any charges were filed. But if the cops have already dealt with you before, you're going to them with the story and then you recanted the story, that kind of hurts your credibility, you know? Especially considering the whole incident was recent. I think even the cops could look right through you and see that you're someone that you're going to them out of vengeance, not because a wrong has been committed. 
So there you are saying, I'm, I could destroy you with the legal system. No, you can't. You really, really can't. Because see, anything you throw at Natter, I'm sure he's got stuff on you too. The fact that you were stalking him, harassing him, and he could probably prove it. He's got all kinds of live streams saved somewhere for evidence. You can't do anything to him without him doing something back. He's such a liar. So along the lines that he's never taken money from you. Okay. <clears throat> RBC Royal Bank. You know, that's kind of dangerous to show that on camera. You know that, right? You're kind of doxing yourself a little bit. She took him off my hands. I'm thankful for that. Trust me. She, she took him off your hands, but yet you keep dealing with him. You keep sending him money. You keep buying him stuff. He's not gone from your life, Chantal. I'm going to realize how fucking unlucky she is. He's shitting his pants. I know. He's shitting his pants. He's, he no, he's not. Fucking... No, he's not. Oh, uh, let's see. So we have here move money. That's my online banking. Oh, you can't see shit. Like, why are you showing that to us? I, I don't want to see that. I don't, I'm not going to let you put that information on screen and then be accused of doxing. There she goes again, yep. showing all kinds of stuff. I'm, I'm not comfortable showing that on this react video. No, I don't. I don't know what she's going to show. I don't know if there's bank account numbers or anything. So I'm not about that doxing life. Even if she doxes yourself, I'm still not going to show it. But here she is acting mad about Natter. Let's see what the comments say. My girl's breathe fire says the day he slapped you across the face for not ordering octopus was a nice day, according to your community post. Weird idea of a nice day, but whatever floats your boat, Pinocchio. I doubt that day even happened. Like the whole slapping across the face thing. I I, I doubt all of her claims of DV. The way that she said that, that she, she said I exaggerated the claims. Okay, which ones did you exaggerate? Which ones are true? But if you're someone and you say you've been through DV and SA, then you turn around and say, I exaggerated the claims. That just means you lied. Laura of the Valley, Valley says, if you're this obsessed over Natter, who has made it clear that he doesn't want a relationship with you and any female he encounters, makes me go back and consider the look of sheer misery and emptiness in BB's eyes. And his constant lack of expression was very unnatural and signs of a severely depressed person. You probably pulled these same tricks on BB to trap him. Yeah, BB did not look happy being with Chantal. He always had this look like, help me, somebody save me. He didn't look like a happy man. His, he looked dead in the eyes for a while. And then after Chantal left, he looked like a completely different person. Uh, let's see. Autumn Joan Hart says, to the VI Beezers, I beg of you, implore you, to live by the golden rule, foodie beauty just hypocritically explained. Give that four ninety nine or super chat money to St. Jude's, Ronald McDonald House, any charity that needs and deserves your hard-earned money. You may come back and ask why I'm on her channel. It's only for this request. I do not support foodie beauty in any way. Sometimes I watch her train wreck action on reaction channels for entertainment. A great reminder of how to remain in control of your life and actually follow the golden rule. It's not hard. I loathe even giving her this view to try and talk sense into certain people. It probably won't work anyway. But if it even gets through to one VIB, I'd be happy. I doubt it will, though. Good try, though, Autumn, but I, I doubt they're listening. Law of the Values Valley says, Imagine continuing to fund and edit the videos of the man who openly treated a woman better than you and threatening to openly sue you. The level of desperation and utter stupidity that has to play it here is astonishing. Everything that happens to Chantal is her choice. 
Every bit of misery in her life is by choice. Choice. She chooses the misery that she has. She's not a victim of her of happenstance or misery that just pops up out of nowhere. You can trace every bit of suffering and misery that she's going through is something that she chooses to make happen. Uh, roly poly fish heads. Oh no, I remember that song. Roly poly fish heads. Oh my God, that's an old song. It says fake rage. Yeah, I agree. Where are we now? Oh, she's still raging. It's so stupid. You have abandonment issues. I'm sorry. What did your super chat say again? How do I win? What? How do you win what? Hold on. I will remember what he said tonight the next time I think I'm in love with him again. Rose HDZ, ready, welcome to Report Visas, ready, set, vegan. I feel like mentally tortured. I do. You know, when she says that, it brings to mind something that she said about people that came into her chat and said that this back and forth, this toxic content, that it hurts their emotional and mental health. And Chantal's response was, I'm not responsible for your mental health. Yet here's Dee and Natter doing stuff on their end and she's saying it's mental torture. Well, Chantal, I'm gonna say the same thing to you you said to other people. They, nor us, are responsible for your mental health. Your mental health is your responsibility. And I'm also gonna tell you something that you told Pete when you were in the car not too long ago. And he mentioned all the things that you did to him when you left him. Your answer was, when it rains, it pours. You said that. So I'm saying it to you. Well, when it rains, it pours, Chantal. Like, I feel like I'm gonna just fucking, like he's gonna kill me. Like, maybe not directly, but I can't let him get to me. I can't let him. How do I win? How do you win? How do you win? You know, I've been saying for a while that the reason why Chantal won't let go of Natter, there's several reasons attached to that. She won't let go of him. <coughs> Excuse me, pardon me, one moment, please. How to get a drink of uh, lemonade. She won't let go of Natter because Natter is content. Number one. Number two, because he's the only male besides Pete that will give her the time of day. And she has to pay him to give her the time of day. Otherwise, he won't even let her look at his watch. Three, because she wants to win. She has an ego. She's a narcissist. And even though she keeps losing, to keep from completely losing, she keeps playing this game. She's not one of those people that has a moment of clarity and wakes up and says, this is getting me nowhere. I got to stop the bleeding. I got to cut my losses and just stop it right here. She looks at Natter as a prize or a conquest. And she's determined to win. And she just said this, how do I win? How do I win? How do you win what? Win over Natter or win over yourself? You will never win over Natter. You won't. But you can win yourself by taking yourself back. But you're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking about how could I be the victor over this dude? Answer, you won't. You can take yourself back. And experience a victory, but as long as you keep pursuing matter, you will never win. How do I win?
You won't. Two brains. It's the KJ boy. What do I have to clean? I'm gonna. Well, tomorrow I have to clean all day. Cause I feel bad. The guy's like wants to come over like every day, and I just say no, no, no. Why I got sick? I think it was stress. Honestly, anxiety. Like when I left my house and I just started like, I started sweating like really bad, and then headache and like my heart pounding, and then like. I felt really weird. Like, I never felt like that. Like, maybe one other time I remember feeling like that. Once or twice, maybe. And I'm like, oh, no. And, the, like, the other times I felt like that, I got sick. So I'm like, I think I'm going to be sick later. So I'm like, should I go home? So that's why I got off the stream in case I puke. I'm going to make sure my house. I'm going to, we're going to clean tomorrow. So I want to, like. Get a good rest. I don't think I can sleep. I need to move my room around or something. Angela? Or when you're not around him. Hello? Like, have I cried lately? Um, yeah. Because I don't feel insane when I'm, I'm when I, I don't, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I feel insane. He makes me feel insane. Like, I'm going crazy. Even when I just watch him, I feel insane. But you watch him all the time. You literally time your live streams to where you can watch him. And if you're not there, you go into other people's chats and go on their community posts and wherever else and make snarky comments like this one. I mean, really? This wasn't on your live stream, Chantal. This was on somebody else's. And you made a point to make this comment. And the crazy thing is that Gary was talking about Didi and allegedly you don't like Didi. I would think you would be delighted that he was making fun of Didi. I would think you'd be very happy. But you made a point to say this and do this. You're making fun of Gary, making fun of Yava. Why? Especially Gary. I mean, Gary has been talking about Didi. So what was the point of that? What was the point of that? If you really hated Didi, why were you going for Gary? He was making fun of her. Everything you're doing, ma'am, points to the fact that all this stuff on YouTube, it's just really bad performance art. The you and Dee Dee and Natter, maybe you guys get along halfway off camera. And because you blur everything together, you can't keep your facts straight. And you can't do what you need to do to make the lie believable. You keep contradicting yourself. Oh, I hate Dee Dee. I hate Natter. But then again, someone's going to do a post and put down Dee Dee and I'm going to stick up for her. You got to stick to a narrative, Chantal. I can't. And I don't know how she sits there. Just like, hmm, I don't know. Hmm. And putting on lipstick isn't going to fucking help you. You still look dumb. Lipstick doesn't fix dumb. So and if you're done with him, you should not be watching his live streams. And if somebody comes into your chat and says, oh, Natter said this and Dee, Dee said that, you should say, I don't care. I'm not interested. But you watch his streams. You watch his every move. And if you got something to say, you don't say it on the phone or something privately. You will scream at him through your monitor and involve a crowd. You don't see the problem in that? Seeing him seems good, but staying all No, no, yeah. <laughs> Actually, um, I was fucking nice to him earlier. Ew. The fucking nerd. I like the wig. Thank you, Monica. <laughs> oh, sorry, what was that? 
getting baked in. Oh, I want some olives. I want spicy olives. I'm going to make my own spices and shit, but it's not healthy. You could sense it happening earlier in your behavior. You have to resist even when everything in your mind is screaming at you to talk to him. You can sense it really quick then. I don't know how. You know, Chantal and Natter, they don't make sense to me. Two grown ass adults, they each have a phone, and yet how they communicate is by YouTube. They act as if there's no po other possible way to communicate. I'm getting sick of these two morons communicating on YouTube when they each have a phone and they can talk to each other without all of us being present and would make us all feel a lot better. Oh, but <laughs> it's fucking sneaky, Anna. <laughs> it's torture. Passion, rage, fear, lust, all mess with your brain chemistry, just like drugs do. It would be normal for you to go through a withdrawal period. Really turns me off the way he talks about me and and completely treats me like a piece of trash after everything I've done for him. After everything you've done for him. That's the narcissist in her talking. She says, I'm a generous, good person, but yet... When Chantal does something for you, trust me, she's going to make you remember it. She's going to hold it over your head, beat you over the head with it. I I'm done. Like, I can't fucking, I'll die. I can't. Like, saying I treat him like crap. Hi, Milky. If I go back to him, are we allowed to tell you off? Yeah. The second day in bed, he told me his whole story and I believed him. I was all on his side. We have great food too. Maria Lavo, yeah. Fuck. You, you have yourself a pride. Good luck. Like, Natter said I sent him 500. Do you what he does? See what I mean? He's never, ever, ever going to, he's always going to find an answer, a new lie to try to make me look bad. This is why I could never fuck with him. Didn't you, but didn't you say that you sent him $500? Didn't you say that not too long ago? He doesn't care about anything but how he looks and himself. Um, at this point, I'm a hundred percent done talking about him. Liar, and liar. Until you may stretch the truth a lot, but I see you can't hold on to a lie for your life. Nope, it does eat me up. It does. It does, because you, you're only lying to yourself. You know, like at the end of the day. Oh, I know. He was so jealous that I apparently made Dee Dee whatever. Like he, that's why he did it. He was, he's like, I just did it. I wanted to prove that I was, I wanted to see if I was better. What? He had to be better at everything. Ew. I don't want to hear about that. Sue so you or block people from asking. Yeah, two weeks. The wave did. <laughs> So she was angry at Natter a few minutes ago, and now she's smiling. It's, this all feels fake to me. How, how do you go from being that mad to being calmed down and smiling like just a few minutes later? And I do actually love myself a lot more. I you don't. Know. Reflecting, you need to. You can't just keep deflecting and lying over top of lies. Like, you are a liar. You are a liar. So are you. So is he still you? alive right now? <laughs> Look at her. I hate him. Is he still alive right now? She wants to know if he's still alive. Mm, I would. I this would have. This would have killed me. If this was me, I'd be dead. 
what? heart attack. How anyone could put up with that? She must have been really lonely and desperate to the point where she. What? Putting up with that? She means really lonely and desperate. Um, ma'am, have you looked in the mirror lately? Doesn't even care like what kind of attention she gets. Maybe that's how I. No, I actually felt for him. I felt for him. You like were legitimately, I too? had this idealized where I didn't realize what he was doing was narcissistic or gaslighting or you know what I mean? And then like everything he's done and is doing to you, you've done and you continue to do to other people. When you look at Natter Chantal, he is literally the male reflection of you. Not, not physically speaking, but the personality, the way he carries himself, the way he treats people, that is you. He is the inner reflection of who you are as a person. Every single thing you say about him you don't like and is awful, that is you. Seeing this ugly side come out, it's like, holy fuck. You're just confirming everything I ever imagined that anything's ever told me about you. <laughs> you know, fucking trillion years. He does the exact same things to you, to her. He pisses her off, love bombs her, and doesn't claim her just like Chantal. Yeah, I know what deep down. That's why I'm not, I can't be with him because I'm not, I can't ignore, I can't lie to myself anymore. Hold his head in my chest and I kiss his forehead and his head smells oh, like hair gel. And cigarettes. Ew. Mm. Trap house. <laughs> she has dementia. Goodbye. What? Yeah. She's eating the fucking oatmeal energy bar. Yeah. That baby should not be eating an energy bar, Chantal. She needs food. She doesn't need energy bars. She needs food. Stop feeding your cats junk. They don't need junk. They need food. You horrible trash bag of a woman. The babies are hungry. Feed them. Thank you, Melly. I will say, you guys have helped me see a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe she's okay with being with a guy? I legit believe that I'm responsible for everything wrong in his life. Excuse me, thanks, Whimsy. Here. Here. You like nose bumping kitties? <laughs> They're cute, eh? So stupid. Yep, you are. It doesn't stress me out. Maybe it stresses me out being online. I don't realize it, but it doesn't really. It kind of relaxes me. <laughs> well, it's not it relaxing me out more being offline, I think. It's so relaxing to be online just because you're not a reactor. You're not a viewer. It's not relaxing for any of us. She probably just thinks she's going to find some any lawyer who's desperate for money or I don't know what. I mean, she told me she's bad with money, so I don't know. She really, really is, she's just like him. They take, they both absolve themselves of any responsibility in any of this, at any of it, at all. Um. 
I'm not pressing charges on them. I'm not. No. No, I'm not going in. I'm not going. I mean, unless they keep, if they actually do keep harassing. Wait. Okay. People are saying in the chat that Pete's is saying that she vomited in the vents, in the heater vent. What? I mean, maybe. But uh, if they do harass me or, I don't know, excuse me. I would, again, I would have to prove just like them. I'm not stupid like them. I'm not going to be like, Blake girl. Yeah. He just put out a video. He's going to go after me, but he just put out a video of me and him in it. Like what? That I edited for. Lord, if she vomited on the heater vent, and if she turns the heater on, Lord, the smell. For him. But I'm harassing him. Like you saw what I was going through with him. Did you not? Did you not? Are you blind? Like literally, what is your excuse? No, even if you're blind, word of mouth. So there's no excuse. Find a real chef, yeah. Yeah. And that video being big time drunk and you're freaking. Why was I freaking? You know, but what was I screaming about? Like I was I mad? Miss Holly, you should write that down so you can look at it was the Cuba Ridge there wasn't anything under the sun. Oh god. Remember blocking? No. Really, Lilia? Oh my god. I'm sorry. I think it's because you're always like a voice of reason. That smell of puke when oh yeah. I don't know. Oh my god, he's you threw up on one of your friends once? Ew. Oh no. I had a friend throw up on me once actually. Gross. It was nasty. I was young. Ugh. I barfed on on Natter. Ew. <laughs> Gross. I didn't even care. Yeah, I threw up on all over Natter. Why? I was really drunk and I don't think we were making out, and I like, oh, gross. I like, I was like, I'm gonna puke. <clears throat> oh yeah, it was a little bit of puke, and then I ran to the bathroom and got the rest in, but there, I did get some on him. Oh my god. And then one time during oral, I threw up all over him. Gross. I threw up at my friend's house in high school in a basket full of clean clothes. No! Oh no, Miss Holly! Absolute rubbish! Hi, Vegas so. Trampoline when wasted. Oh god. Ew. I hate barf. I don't want to talk about barf. Someone's floor went and covered it with clothes because I was so drunk and I was panicking. Oh no, Anna! That sucks when that happens, eh? It's one of those things you can't. Okay, I think we're done here. She's talking about vomit. Um, yeah, time to cut off the react. <laughs> we're at like an hour, almost an hour and a half. I just try to put three into one, y'all. I don't want to throw like three or four videos at y'all. So I think we're done here. I don't know if she's going to rage anymore, but yeah, I'm out. She's talking about vomit. I'm out. We're out of here. We're, we're done. <laughs> We're done here. All right, I'm out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and post this video. Thank you guys for watching and please have a great night. Bye-bye.